Thank you for the introduction. My name is Gali and I'm a PhD student at the Technion Israel. This paper is a joint work with my advisor, Professor Eris Petrank. In our work, we initiate a study of functional faults by defining formally the functional fault model. Unlike processes failures and memory faults, which occur regardless of the behavior of the executing processes, a functional fault happens when the outcome of a certain function does not satisfy its specification. We also demonstrate our model with a specific natural functional fault of the important compare and swap synchronization primitive, which we call the overriding cast fault. We show constructions and impossibilities in the presence of this functional fault. Before presenting our model, let me go over some relevant related work, making computation robust in the presence of hardware and software faults has been the focus of many theoretical and practical studies. Many existing studies focus on failing processes. For example, in a shared memory setting, a crash of a process holding a lock can prevent all other threads from making progress. Two well-known ways to deal with such failures are designing weight-free algorithms and adding crash recovery protocols. From the practical aspect, there is the occurrence of soft errors, which are temporary faults that arise due to a variety of internal and external noise sources. Another area of ext extensive research is approximate computing, where computations may err, for example, due to resources being scaled down to reduce energy. This is a special case of functional faults, and our work can also be used to formally model these errors. Another related research area studies performance benefits obtained by allowing data structures to deviate from their original specifications. For example, a queue which does not guarantee that a pop operation will actually return the head of the queue, but some other queue item. Relaxed data structures are, are also a special case of functional faults. Another type of faults which has been modeled formally is the memory data faults. Let me elaborate on this model. Two independent papers formally defined memory data faults during the 90s. Memory data faults occur when data in the memory gets corrupted. It may result either in non-terminating read requests, arbitrary changes of the memory content, or false content being read from the memory. There are two natural ways to deal with memory data faults. The first one is using error correcting codes. However, while the arbitrary changes can be overcome using error correcting codes, this method is not applicable for the non-terminating read requests and the false outputs fault. For overcoming all of the above memory data faults types, both papers used the concept of composing faulty memory objects in order to construct a reliable one. For example, implementing a reliable read-write object out of three read-write registers, out of which at most one can be faulty. The composition method solves all of the above problems in the memory data faults model, and we have decided to adopt it in our model as well. As I've already mentioned, a functional fault occurs during the execution of an operation. Although the operation's preconditions are satisfied, its postconditions are not. In this simple example, our object is a calculator and the operation divides A by B. The only precondition for this operation is that B is different from zero. While this precondition indeed holds as B equals two, the operation's output is three which is false, meaning the operation's post condition, according to which the output must be equal to the division result, does not hold. We define functional faults as structured faults. We always assume that some relaxed post conditions are still satisfied. In a similar way to this example, we can always require that the output is relatively close to the correct answer. In a similar way to the memory data faults model, we overcome functional faults by composing faulty objects in order to implement a reliable one. Suppose there is a bound F on the total number of faulty calculators in our example. 
we can implement a reliable calculator from two F plus one calculators and always output the majority. Notice that although our motivating example is arithmetic, our case study is from the shared memory setting. I am now going to formally present our model using three key definitions. We use the standard set of correctness conditions for operations according to Hoare logic. We use this triplet of op, psi, and phi to express an operation, its pre and post conditions respective. Meaning, as long as the assertion psi is true before op is invoked, it is guaranteed that the assertion phi will be true after op completes. We first define the functional fault concept. Given an operation op, its precondition psi, its postcondition phi, and some relaxed postcondition phi prime, we say that an op phi prime fault occurred if psi is sat satisfied when op is invoked, phi is not satisfied when op terminates, but the relaxed postcondition phi prime is satisfied when op terminates. Note that as I've already mentioned, we assume a structured fault, which means that the relaxed postcondition P prime must exist. Our second definition regards faulty objects. Given an execution, an object is considered faulty if at least one of its operations executed during the execution resulted in a fault. In this execution, you can see that O2 is non-faulty since the single invocation of its operations resumed without a fault. On the other hand, although only one out of the two invocations of O1's operations resulted in a fault, it is enough for considering it as a faulty object. The definition holds for, for concurrent executions as well. Here, O1 is considered faulty, although only a single process out of the three invoked an operation resulting in a fault. Our third and last definition defines the terms of re reliability in the presence of faults. We use the FTN triplet in order to encapsulate the bound F on the total number of faulty objects in the system, the bound T on the number of faults per faulty object, and the, the bound N on the number of executing processes. FTNN are represented by natural numbers when their respective bounds exist and by infinity when there are no bounds. We say that an implementation is FTN tolerant if it is reliable given these three bounds. These three definitions of relaxed post conditions, faulty objects and fault tolerance sum up our model. We will now move on to our case study. For demonstrating our model, we chose to implement a reliable consensus protocol using a faulty compare and swap object. The compare and swap or CAS object is a widely used synchronization parameter. It offers a single operation which receives two input parameters, an expected value and a new value. If the expected value is equal to the current object content, it replaces its content with the new value. The comparison and replacement are done atomically, even when executed in parallel with other operations. We define the overriding cast fault as follows. When such a fault occurs, the new value is written anyway, even if the expected value is not equal to the old content. The overriding cast fault is a simple example for a structured fault. As the CAS implementation involves a comparison of the expected and actual values, practically such an error would follow from a comparison error. In the paper, we discuss other potential CAS faults. As I've already mentioned, we chose to implement a reliable consensus object using faulty CAS objects. A consensus object provides a single operation, which is called decide. Each process invokes this operation with a certain input value and receives the decision as an output value. The consensus object must satisfy three requirements. Agreement, which means that all processes must decide on the same value. Validity, which means that the decision must be an input value. And weight freedom, each process terminates after a bounded number of steps, regardless of the behavior of the rest of the processes. In a reliable setting, 
Solving consensus for an unbounded number of processes can be done easily using a single CAS object. Using our case study, we demonstrated how to construct, construct a reliable object from faulty ones. We introduced three robust constructions of consensus out of potentially faulty CAS objects and formally proved their correctness. We showed that when there are only two processes in the system, consensus can be achieved using a single faulty CAS object, even when there is no bound on the number of faults per faulty object. Moving on to our second construction, when the number of processes is more than two, the number of faulty objects is bounded by F and there is no bound on the number of faults per faulty object, we presented a reliable consensus object using F plus one CAS objects. This construction is reliable given any number of participating processes. For every bound T on the number of faults per faulty object, we also constructed a reliable consensus object using F CAS objects. All may be faulty, assuming there are at most F plus one processes in the system. This result beats the respective impossibility result from the memory data faults model, stating that achieving consensus is possible only when there is at least one reliable CAS object. Our construction uses F CAS objects and is reliable even if all of them are faulty. In addition to these three constructions, we proved that our constructions are optimal in terms of objects redundancy. Meaning, given the bounds on the number of faulty objects, fault per faults per faulty object, and the number of executing processes, one cannot use fewer CAS objects. Using covering argument, we proved that when the number of faulty objects is bounded by some natural number F, and the number of faults per faulty object is bounded by some natural number T, it is impossible to build a reliable consensus object using F objects, when the number of processes is at least F plus two. Using an indistinguishability argument, we proved that when the number of faults is bounded by some natural number F and the number of faults per faulty object is unbounded, it is impossible to build a reliable consensus object using less than F plus one objects for any number of processes. We will only have time to sketch one of the five proofs in the paper. Let me remind you that when the bound on the number of faulty objects is F, for every bound T on the number of faults per faulty object, we have a reliable consensus construction for F plus one processes that uses F cas objects. I am now going to show you that given the same bounds on the number of faulty objects and the number of faults per faulty object, one cannot construct a reliable consensus object with F cas objects for more than F plus one processes. Assume by contradiction that when there are at most F faulty CAS objects in the system, each with at most T faults, it is possible to construct a reliable consensus object for more than F plus one processes using F CAS objects. Actually, proving impossibility for at most one fault per faulty object and exactly F plus two processes is enough. Let's denote the executing processes with P1, P2, and so on. And since the bound on the faulty objects is F, let's assume that all of the CAS objects are faulty. Now, consider the following execution. At first, P1 runs alone until it terminates. By weight freedom, it must eventually terminate, and by validity, it, might, it must decide on its own input value. Then P2 runs alone until it overrides one of P1's writes by executing an overriding CAS fault. Right after that, P2 is halted. After P2 is halted, P3 runs alone until it overrides one of P1's writes by executing an overriding CAS fault. Right after that, P3 is also halted. We continue with this scenario 
until all of P1's rights are overridden by the next F processes. In the paper, we prove that for satisfying the agreement condition, the processes must execute CAS operations on all of the objects, and therefore all of P1's rights are indeed overridden. Next, we let PF plus two run alone. For weight freedom, it must eventually terminate and make a decision. However, this execution and another execution in which P1 does not run at all are indistinguishable to PF plus two. By validity, PF plus two cannot decide on P1's input value. Since P1 decides on its own input value in this execution, we get a, contradi a contradiction to agreement. This brings us to one of our impossibility results. When the bound on the total number of faulty CAS objects is F, and the bound on the number of faults per faulty CAS object is some natural number T, there is no reliable consensus construction for more than F plus one processes using F cas objects. The rest of the reliable constructions and impossibility results together with, with this one appear and are fully proven in the paper. Besides proving the optimality of our constructions, presenting impossibility results and beating the memory data faults lower bound, we had an additional interesting result. Given a shared object, its consensus number represents the maximal number of processes for which this object can implement a consensus object. For example, it is a well-known fact that one cannot implement consensus using read-write registers, even for two processes. In addition, a reliable CAS object is sufficient for implementing consensus for an unbounded number of participating processes. Interestingly, our robust constructions using faulty objects with bounded or unbounded number of faults per faulty object yield the entire consensus numbers hierarchy. As you can see, for every natural n, we have a robust construction for n processes that can tolerate up to n min minus one faulty objects and any bounded number of faults per faulty object. Future work may include the investigation of other case studies, including other synchronization primitives, shared objects, or different kinds of faults. It would also be interesting to examine other tasks besides the consensus problem. Another interesting direction can be categorizing fault severity. In a similar way to the term of graceful degradation introduced in the memory data faults model, this may help us categorize levels of reliability in our model. Next, we can turn to the practical aspect and focus, on, and focus the efforts on faults that occur more frequently in practice. Finally, we may consider proving a better lower bound when certain constructions make use of more than a single reliable consensus object. For example, a well-known previous results, result show that a certain amount of reliable consensus objects is sufficient for implementing any weight-free object. Our proven lower bound shows that a certain amount of faulty base objects is necessary for implementing a single reliable consensus object. Using fewer base objects per reliable consensus object when there are multiple consensus objects seem possible. In summary, we presented and formalized the functional faults model. We also demonstrated our model using a specific fault in the CAS synchronization primitive. We constructed robust consensus objects given different fault scenarios and proved their optimality by showing respective lower bounds. We also showed that our model is more expressive than the memory data faults model by beating one of its proven lower bounds. Finally, we have demonstrated the richness of our test case by matching a robust constructions, construction per consensus number in the consensus hierarchy. Thank you very much.